we have an awesome God. Amen. Amen. We have a God who cares about us. Who loves us. And all we have to do is call upon him. And, and call out his name. Amen. Amen. I know that 
Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. That's for you, Lord, and for you alone. There's a peace I've come to know Though my heart and flesh may fail There's an anchor for my soul I can say it is well Jesus has Thank mm -hmm. you.
last ride my to Calvary with Jesus Baby.
God from whom all blessings flow. Praise Him, all creatures here below. Praise Him above the heavenly
you're worthy of it all. So do you just want to give <laughs> it back to you in praise? want to say that you are worthy over Ohi. That you're running after these souls in Ohi. That many will come to know the name of Jesus in Ohi. We believe it. Yeah. 
My name is Paul, and I have been chosen by Jesus Christ to be his apostle, by the calling and destined purpose of God. My colleague Timothy and I sent this letter to all the holy believers who have been united to Jesus as beloved followers of the Messiah. May everything good from God our Father be yours. Our prayers for you are always spilling over into thanksgivings. We can't quit thanking God our Father and Jesus our Messiah for you. We keep getting reports on your steady faith in Christ our Jesus and the love you continuously extend to all Christians. Your faith and love rise within you as you access all the treasures of your inheritance stored up in the heavenly realm. For the revelation of the true gospel is as real today as the day you first heard of our glorious hope. It doesn't diminish or weaken over time. It's the same all over the world. The message bears fruit and gets larger and stronger, just as it has in you. From the very first day you heard and recognized the truth of what God is doing, you've been hungry for more. It's as vigorous in you now as when you learned it from our friend and close associate Epaphras. He is one reliable worker for Christ. I could always depend on him. He's the one who told us how thoroughly love had been worked into our lives by the Spirit. Be assured that from the first day we heard of you, we haven't stopped praying for you, asking God to give you wise minds and spirits attuned to his will, and so acquire a thorough understanding of the ways in which God works. We pray that you'll live well for the Master, making him proud of you as you work hard in his orchard. As you learn more and more how God works, you will learn how to do your work. We pray that you'll have the strength to stick it out over the long haul. Not the grim strength of gritting your teeth, but the glory strength God gives. It is strength that endures the unendurable, and your hearts can soar with joyful gratitude when you think of how God made you worthy to receive the glorious inheritance freely given to us by living in the light. God rescued us from dead-end alleys and dark dungeons, he set us up in the kingdom of the son he loves so much. The son who got us out of this pit we were in. Got rid of the sins we were doomed to keep repeating. He's the divine portrait. The true likeness of the invisible God and the firstborn heir of all creation. For by him all things were created in heaven. And on earth. Visible. And invisible. Whether thrones or dominions. Or rulers or authorities. All things were created through him and for him and he is before all things and in him all things hold together and he is the head of the body the church he's the beginning the firstborn from the dead 
that in everything he might be preeminent. For in him all the fullness of God was pleased to dwell. And by the blood of his cross, everything in heaven and earth is brought back to himself. Back to its original intent. Restored to innocence again. Even though you were once distant from him, living in the shadows of your evil thoughts and actions, he reconnected you back to himself. He released his supernatural peace to you through the sacrifice of his own body as the sin payment on your behalf so that you would dwell in his presence. And now there is nothing between you and Father God for he sees you as holy, flawless, and restored. If indeed you continue to advance in faith, assured of a firm foundation to grow upon. How firm a foundation you say Never be shaken from the hope of the gospel you have believed in. And this is the glorious news I preach all over the world. I want you to know how glad I am that it's me sitting here in this jail and not you. There's a lot of suffering to be entered into this world. The kind of suffering Christ takes on. I welcome the chance to take my share in the church's part of that suffering. When I became a servant in this church, I experienced this suffering as a sheer gift. God's way of helping me serve you, laying out the whole truth. There is a divine mystery, a secret surprise that has been concealed from the world for generations. But now it's being revealed, unfolded and manifested for every holy believer to experience. Living within you is the Christ who floods you with the expectation of glory. This mystery of Christ embedded within us becomes a heavenly treasure chest of hope filled with the riches of glory for his people. And God wants everyone to know it. Christ, Christ is, is our, our message. message. We preach to awaken hearts and bring every person into the full understanding of truth. It has become my inspiration and passion in ministry to labor with a tireless intensity, with his power throwing, flowing through me, to present to every believer the revelation of being his perfect one in Jesus Christ. I want you to realize that I continue to work as hard as I know how for you, and also for the Christians over at Laodicea. Not many of you have met me face to face, but that doesn't make any difference. Know that I'm on your side, right alongside you. You are not in this alone. I want you woven into a tapestry of love, in touch with everything there is to know of God. Then you will have minds confident and at rest, focused on Christ, God's great mystery. All the richest treasures of wisdom and knowledge are embedded in that mystery and nowhere else. And we've been shown that mystery. I'm telling you this because I don't want anyone leading you off on some wild goose chase after so-called mysteries or the secret. Even though I'm separated from you geographically, my spirit is present there with you. And I'm overjoyed to see how disciplined and deeply committed you are because you have such a solid faith in Christ, the anointed one. Our counsel for you is simple and straightforward. Just go ahead with what you've been given. You received Jesus Christ, the master. Now live him. You're deeply rooted in him. You're well constructed upon him. You know your way around the faith. Now do what you've been taught. School's out. Quit studying the subject and start living it. And let your living spill over into Thanksgiving. Beware that no one distracts you or intimidates you in their attempt to lead you away from Christ's fullness by pretending to be full of wisdom when they're filled with endless arguments of human logic, where they operate with humanistic and clouded judgments based on the mindset of this world system and not the anointed truths of the anointed one. Jesus. For he is the complete fullness Jesus. of deity living in human form. And our own completeness is now found in him. We are completely filled with God as Christ's fullness overflows within us. He's the head of every kingdom and authority in the universe. Entering into this fullness is not something you figure out or achieve. It's not a matter of being circumcised or keeping a long list of laws. No, you're already in. Insiders. Not through some secret initiation, right? 
but rather through what Christ has already gone through for you, destroying the power of sin. If it's, initi if it's an initiation ritual you're after, you've already been through it by submitting to baptism. Going under the water was a burial of your old life. Coming up out of it was a resurrection, God raising you from the dead as he did Christ. When you were, struck in your, when you were stuck in your old sin-dead life, you were incapable of responding to God. God brought you alive right along with Christ. Think of it. All sins forgiven, the slate wiped clean, that old arrest warrant canceled and nailed to Christ's cross. He stripped all the spiritual tyrants in the universe of their sham authority at the cross and marched them naked through the streets. So don't put up with anyone pressuring you in details of diet, worship services, or holy days. All those things are mere shadows cast before what was to come. The substance is Christ. Don't tolerate people who try to run your life, ordering you to bow and scrape, insisting that you join their obsession with angels and that you seek out visions. They're a lot of hot air. That's all they are. They're completely out of touch with the source of life, Christ, who puts us together in one piece, whose every breath and blood flows through us. He's the head and we are the body. We can grow up healthy in God only as he nourishes us. For you were included in the death of Christ and have died with him to the religious system and powers of this world. Don't retreat back to being bullied by the standards and opinions of religion. For example, their strict requirements. You can't associate with that person. Or. Don't eat that. Or. You can't touch that. Do you think things that are here today and gone tomorrow are worth that kind of attention? Such things sound impressive. If said in a deep enough voice. They even give the illusion of being pious and humble and ascetic. But they're just another way of showing off, making yourselves look important. So, if you're serious about living this new resurrection life with Christ, act like it. Pursue the things over which Christ presides. Don't shuffle along, eyes to the ground, absorbed with the things right in front of you. Look up and be alert to what is going on around Christ. That's where the action is. See things from his perspective. Your old life is dead. Your new life, which is your real life, even though invisible to spectators, is with Christ in God. He is your life. When Christ, your real life, remember, shows up again on this earth, you'll show up too. The real you, the glorious you. Meanwhile, be content with obscurity like Christ. And that means killing off everything connected with that way of death. Sexual promiscuity. Impurity. Lust. Doing whatever you feel like, whenever you feel like it. And grabbing whatever attracts your fancy. That's a life shaped by things and feelings instead of God. It's because of this kind of thing that God is about to explode in anger. It wasn't long ago that you were doing all that stuff and not knowing any better. But you know better now. So make sure it's all gone for good. Bad temper. Irritability. Meanness. Profanity. Dirty talk. Don't lie to one another. You're done with that old life. It's like a filthy set of ill-fitting clothes you've stripped off and put in the fire. Now you're dressed in a new wardrobe. Every item of your new way of love is custom made by the creator with his label on it. All the old fashions are now obsolete. Words like Jewish and non-Jewish. Religious and irreligious. Insider and outsider. Uncivilized and uncouth. Slave and free. Mean nothing. From now on, everyone is defined by Christ. Everyone is included in Christ. So, chosen by God for this new life of love, dress in the wardrobe God picked out for you. Compassion. Kindness. Humility. Quiet strength. Discipline. Be even-tempered, content with second place, quick to forgive an offense. Forgive as quickly and completely as the master forgave you. And regardless of what else you put on, wear love. It's your basic, all-purpose garment. Never be without it. Let the peace of Christ keep you in tune with each other, in step with each other. None of this going off and doing your own thing. And cultivate thankfulness. Let the word of Christ, the message, have the run of the house. Give it plenty of room in your lives. 
instruct and direct one another using good common sense. And sing, sing your hearts out to God. When peace like a river attendeth my way, when sorrows like sea billows roll, whatever my thought thou hast taught me to say, it is well, it is well with my soul. Let every detail in your lives, words, actions, whatever, be done in the name of the Master Jesus, thanking God the Father every step of the way. Wives, understand and support your husbands by submitting to them in ways that honor the Master. Husbands, go all out in love for your wives. Don't take advantage of them. Children, do what your parents tell you. This delights the Master no end. Parents, don't come down too hard on your children or you'll crush their spirits. Servants, do what you're told by your earthly masters. And don't just do the minimum that will get you by. Do your best. Work from the heart for your real master, for God, confident that you'll get paid in full when you come into your inheritance. Keep in mind always that the ultimate master you're serving is Christ. The soul and servant who does shoddy work will be held responsible. Being a follower of Jesus doesn't cover up bad work. And masters, treat your servants considerately. Be fair with them. Don't forget a minute that you too serve a master, God in heaven. Devote yourselves to prayer, being watchful and thankful. And pray for us too, that God may open a door for our message so that we may proclaim the mystery of Christ. For which I, Paul, am in chains. Pray that we may proclaim it clearly as we should. Verhaltet euch weise und besonnen denen gegenüber, die keine Christen sind. Be wise in the way you act toward outsiders. Macht das Beste aus der Zeit, die euch geschenkt ist. Make the most of every opportunity. Redet mit jedem Menschen freundlich. Alles, was ihr sagt, soll gut und hilfreich sein. Let your conversations be always full of grace, seasoned with salt. Bemüht euch darum, für jeden die richtigen Worte zu finden. So that you may know how to answer everyone. Now. Finally, I, Paul, write this with my own handwriting, and I send my loving greetings to you. Remember me in my imprisonment. May the blessings of God's grace overwhelm you. Love in Christ. Paul. Well, good evening, everybody. My name is Josh, and I'm from Redemption Church, along with some of our worship team here. And we are so excited to be with you guys tonight. And I'm just I'm glad we all get to do this. We all get to get together and, and worship God. And what a beautiful, amazing place we get to do it. And uh, I'm just excited. I'm excited to be here, and I hope you are too. And hey, I want to encourage you just that man. This is a this is a worship night first and foremost. So as we sing, we're the, we're the last group up here. So as we sing, as we uh, just declare how good God is, just you know, if you want to stand, then you can stand. If you want to sit, if you want to dance, if you want to lift your hands, just whatever gets you to that place where you are just worshiping God with your whole heart. Let's just do that together.
song tonight. I just want to encourage you, whether you know this song or not, I just pray that this song will just touch your heart. This is such a powerful song, just talking about just the truth of what Jesus did for us on that cross.
you to stand and get permission to hold the hand of the person next to you. Uh, Lynn, if you'll come forward, and Gavin, and uh, Pastor Ron, if you're here, uh, it's going to bless us. Uh, also, uh, Natalie and Pamela and Jacob Reeve and Nancy Redding, would you stand a little, come on up and just stand in front of these trees. Um, this is a team that will be praying for you if you want to experience the love of Jesus in any dimension. So we invite you to come and uh, have prayer at, uh, at the end. And um, I'm going to ask you to ask Jesus for one person in Ojai that's the least likely person to come to him. And so, Lord, just tell us that name. Mine's Byron Katie and Deborah King who is just moving in. I think God sends cult leaders to this city to encounter Jesus. Lord, each person you've said to us tonight, Lord, we just say you are so worthy of their love. You are so worthy of their hearts. And we ask your Holy Spirit to contend and draw and woo with strong cords of love and affection. We ask, Lord, that a canopy of your Holy Spirit would rest over this valley in the hardest hearts, the most impossible people. Lord, we want an impossible inheritance for you in Ohio. And Lord, we just bless the person on our right with your fullness. We bless the person on our left. We just say the riches of your glorious inheritance, Lord, be theirs. Let your goodness, Lord, be upon each one who's come to worship you tonight. We ask for an endless preoccupation with your beauty and marveling at who you are, God of all the earth. Amen. The pastors are going to pronounce a blessing. Keep holding hands as they do. And if you'd like prayer, the prayer team would be happy to pray for you at the end. Let's just continue in that same heart posture and say a prayer for those who are um, 
desperately in need of the Jesus and the love that we've been singing about tonight. Let's pray. Father, thank you so much for the incredible joy and privilege it is to come together as believers in Jesus from all different backgrounds, and yet we have the same faith, we have the same love for you, and we come together with one spirit tonight. Thank you, Lord, that we can do that. Thank you for the incredible beauty of the landscape just around us, and as we're singing these words that you're worthy of it all, we just recognize, Lord,